Hey, my friends, welcome back to another CivOps gear review. I'm sorry it's been so long. I've missed you so much, so, so much, but I've been so busy with the holidays approaching and everything going on in the world overseas. I, my life has been a scheduling disaster. Uh, I'm happy to be back and have time to make a video with you. Yes, that's right, my friends. Today we were talking about the wacky, crazy, backwards world of California AR-15s and how I just had a great time building out what this wackadoodle state considers to be a featureless rifle. This rifle's got nothing on it. And um, as you will see, uh, I'm gonna, we're going to uh, break it down part by part and uh, walk you quickly through my journey building this little uh, Californication experiment. Um, Thanks so much for sticking around. Make sure that you click that like button for me. If you like all this content, if you like that shotgun I built, if you want to know more about ARs like this, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave a comment for me. Let me know your thoughts on the wacky uh, world of California. And um, let's break this rifle down and go to the mat. All right, you guys, here we are uh, with the uh, rifle broken down into uh, upper and lower. And uh, I've got uh, the the bar the the barks the boxes and parts that uh, I was able to retrieve that I still have, uh, and let's let's go through the process and I'll tell you exactly what I built and why. So, first part is uh, the lower receiver from uh, Arrow Precision. So uh, I got this um, at a very cool gun shop in uh, Thousand Oaks, California. And uh, originally, of course, the Aero Precision Lower comes with um, a standard pistol grip and an extendable uh, stock, right? But Californication. So um, you have to take this pistol grip off because this is far, far too dangerous. You can't possibly allow one of these scary ARs to have a pistol grip. That's, that's just going to kill everybody. But I'll tell you what safety now it's safe. Now I feel better about this gun. Now it's safer. Oh, and the other thing, you can't possibly allow the general public to have a stock that goes from here to here and back again. Why, that's, in, that's insane. That's clearly made to kill children. I'll tell you what we do to make that safer. Just make it permanently extended. Much safer. Now, this is a safer rifle. I, as the state of California, I can get behind this rifle. This can't hurt anybody. So, that's the uh, situation with the lower receiver. Um, it's now been Californicated, and um, the buffer tube and spring are still in the same position, just no stock attached. And... Um, the pistol grip's been replaced with a slightly more angled uh, fixed stock, sort of a uh, more supposedly like a rifle, more of a rifle grip. But I'll tell you the thing with the grip. For a lot of people, if you're a larger sized person like me, uh, I mean, I'm 6'2", and I have a pretty good reach, um, this fixed stock can actually be a little too short. And so you end up really not able to get a full grip on this when when the stock is all the way back against your arm. So what you end up doing is kind of modifying your grip and kind of doing a lot of this with some fingers down because, you know, this really wants to be a pistol grip, as you all know. And uh, so you end up doing a lot of this kind of one finger thing with your thumb and these fingers down because trying to get all your fingers around here, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable and you end, up, you end up in this position a lot. But uh, that's fine. It is, it is what it is. So um, there we go. So uh, the Thirdsden stock that's on this, and that's what this is, a uh, Thirdsden stock. The um, Aero Precision Lower, built lower, was uh, two something, 250, something like that. I'll share a link. And then uh, the thirds in stock, which comes with this piece and this piece, uh, was a hundred something, something like that. So uh, there's your complete lower for, you know, 350, 375, something like that. California cated. All right. Now we move on to the upper, 
which is more interesting. For the upper, I have a good friend. I was shopping around. I have a good friend, uh, lives up in Oregon, a dear old friend, who told me, check out Palmetto State Armory. That's what we have here. So I was on their site. I was looking at some of their uppers. And uh, boy, for the prices, a uh, 556 uh, fully built upper that came with the uh, Magpul flip-up sights, came with those. Um, it was a great deal. Uh, 275, 325, I can't remember exactly. I'll share a link again. But uh, the problem for me was that it came with this M lock foregrip. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, this M lock uh, 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 forend hand grip. So, and, and I, and I, knowing that, I purchased an M lock. Uh, foregrip for it that would, you know, screw in and go underneath like that. But I ran into a problem there. The problem I ran into was I really wanted to try this Streamlight TLR RM. And uh, I didn't want to use a silly adapter plate that was just going to stick out further. And so I, 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 I knew I really wanted a quad rail. So, okay, went back to the gun store ordered the Aero Precision quad rail, came in, did not have the right barrel nut, had to wait, get the barrel nut brought in, um, put the put the forend on, put the quad rail on, and uh, then I was able to uh, go back, rebuy the foregrip uh, for quad rail, put that on, just barely have enough room because you see the rail doesn't go all the way. So just barely had enough room to mount the light. You see it's way up in the front and the grip. So, but as it turns out, it works beautifully together. I'm using the pressure grip because, you know, I'm trying to use everything on this, being that I wanna, I wanna see how many features can be packed into a featureless rifle. So you'll see the uh, wire goes from the back of the light there up through the teeth of the rail, around, and into the pressure grip. So when I'm holding this in my support hand, my grip sits just like that. And uh, the placement works out beautifully for me. Hey, my friends, let's do a quick little diversion here and break the uh, fourth wall and have a quick look at this uh, TLR RM2. Um, this, uh, when I ordered it, was uh, pretty new, actually, from Streamlight. And um, I'm pretty sure the RM stands for rail-mounted. Uh, I'm not positive about that, but it would make sense, considering this is specifically made to go on the rail of a long gun. Um, however, most of their lights mount on the rails under pistols, but... Okay, anyway, irrelevant point. Uh, I'm, this is a pretty cool uh, light, actually. I'm pretty excited I got this. Um, the uh, You can obviously lock it out and turn it back on. Um, the pressure switch that I attached offers momentary as well as tap on, tap off. You can still activate it with the body-mounted push button if you want to, even with the... Uh, pressure switch turned on or plugged in. Uh, it's a thousand lumens plus a green laser. And of course, on the other side, you have your switch, which allows for a uh, light laser. I don't know if you'll be able to see the laser. You can kind of see it above the A there. Um, or you can switch to just light, or you can switch to just laser. And uh, most of us know that lasers are not used all that often. Uh, they're really not. Mo most, most of us are happy with just a light in most situations, but um, I'm one of those people who kind of spends time daydreaming about impossible scenarios. You know, what, okay, what if my optic is blown out and my strong hand is not usable? You know, silly things like that. So, you know, 
I like to have the laser options. Um, so anyway, this is very cool. If you have a long gun, you're looking for a light. This is a thousand lumens and I love the profile. And I just really also love how it fits in my hand. Either way, with the pressure switch or without it, even if I was just holding the, uh, the rifle like this, that activation switch is right there. But see, the pressure switch is much more. It's perfect. It's really pretty perfect. So uh, just a little side note to talk about the Streamlight TLR RM2. Back to the video. Um, okay, so we had to, we started with the Palmetto fully built upper, had to replace the M-Lock with the quad rail. Uh, and then I knew once I had the quad rail, I was able to build out the lower rail that I knew I wanted, which was this angled foregrip, because again, Californicated, if it were a vertical foregrip, far too dangerous. Why, by God, this gun is made to murder children. So if we angle it back, now it's safe. So I knew I wanted this angled foregrip. I knew I wanted to try out the new Streamlight, uh, the um, uh, RM2, and I'm glad I did. It's super cool. And, um, and then last finishing touch. I knew for California, there was not a chance in hell I could put a silencer on this upper receiver. Obviously, California, this is, as a lot of places, require a 16-inch barrel. Same thing with California. This is, in fact, a 16-inch barrel. Don't be fooled by the silencer because this is a fake can. This is like 40 bucks online. This is the, uh, the fake can. It's like 40 bucks. I got this from a place called Veriforce Tactical, and uh, they've got a couple different varieties that you can pick from, and uh, they're all like 35 to 45 bucks. And um, they give you this very cool look. If you can kind of look through the quad rail here, they give you this look like you have a shorter barrel, um, like maybe like a 10 inch barrel or 12 inch barrel, and then a suppressor on the end. But the truth is it's a 16 inch barrel that goes all the way up to the end. The whole center is bored out. It simply slides over your barrel and screws in here at the tip inside. So that's the end of your barrel in there. And uh, let me see if I can show you this. If you can see in there at all, you can see that at the end of the can, there's like a cuff and it just simply slides right over the barrel. Now, yes, some of you are gonna say it's upside down. It is upside down, you know what? Once you put it on and tighten it down, lock it down, uh, and then you notice it's upside down, that you, you, you didn't get the threading right, it becomes more of a pain in the butt to take it off and do it again than it's really worth. Uh, especially because this rifle is going to be broken down, like I said, but uh, it's on there and it makes my point and it uh, provides a cool look that for like 40 bucks you can get this kind of spec ops looking look to your AR. Pretty cool. All right, back to the video. And let's see if I can show you what it looks like in the front. There you go. All right. And then, uh, without replacing a lot of internal parts, I probably didn't need the accuracy and distance provided by the EOTech with the magnifier. All right, let's break the fourth wall again, do one more side note here about the EOTech sighting system. Um, the EOTech, as many of you know who have these, is not an RDS. It is not a red dot sight. It is actually a holographic sight. And uh, I'm gonna see with the camera mounted how it is, if I can possibly show you what the holographic reticle looks like if you've never used an EOTech before because it takes some getting used to. All right, I'm sorry for the angle, being that the uh, the receiver has to basically be upside down, but you can see that red dot in there. As opposed to an RDS, which is just a red dot, this is actually a holograph comprised of many, 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 many little beams of light. And... Uh, it takes a little getting used to. It can look fuzzy. It looks more clear through the magnifier, 
but it can look fuzzy until you get used to it. The trick really is to look through the holograph and look at your target, but um, it can be tricky to do it first. Anyway, that's what it looks like. So this is not an RDS. This is a, a holographic site. And uh, then when you add the magnifier, you get three, what, 3.2, something like that magnification. And of course, being that they're both EOTech components made to work together, the height is perfect and matches exactly right, assuming they're both mounted on the same rail, both with quick releases. So if God knows what scenario, you wanna pop those off and flip to your irons, you can. Uh, those of course, came on the PAR, on the uh, Palmetto um, State Armory, PSA uh, upper. And uh, so with that said, back to the video. Here's the final result. Um, it's actually not a bad look. You know, if you're into um, ARs, but but you're willing to, to dig on a new Californication kind of look, it's kind of a cool looking weapon. And, um, you know, of course, everybody who, who knows ARs knows the beauty of them, the modularity of them, the fact that I can buy the lower I want, buy the upper I want, put them together and, uh, you know, fire the same ammo that I could with virtually any other AR um, right off the bat is, is pretty great. A, a lot of people call them a grown man's Barbie doll because you can dress them up any which way you want. And I think that's that's pretty accurate. I'm not sure I would say that out loud, but it's pretty accurate. And uh, there you go. A Californified AR, featureless. The state of California considers this rifle to have no features. It has none. It is barren. It is safe. It couldn't hurt a soul because it has no features. I'll see you guys on the very next CivOps gear review. Uh, leave me a comment if you live in the state or if you live out of state and have opinions on our state. Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Have a great holiday.